Our Old Testament scripture reading comes from the fourth chapter of Jeremiah, verses 11 through 12 and 22. And the second is chapter 19, verses 1 through 2, 10 through 11, and 14 through 15. In that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a scorching wind from the barren heights in the wilderness comes from my command. And against the daughter of my people, not a wind to widow and not to cleanse from the chaff as them threshing, but a wind too strong and full from this comes at my word. Now I will speak judgment against my people. For my people, you are stupid and foolish, says the Lord to Jeremiah. They do not know me, they are foolish child, and they have no understanding. They are shrewd enough to do evil, but they do not know how to do good. God spoke to Jeremiah, go again to a potter, but this time buy a clay jar from him. Then invite some community leaders and some of the head priests who walk with you. Take them out of the city through the pot shred gate into the valley of Ben Hinnom, where the valley, I mean where the city dumps its trash. Once you're there, cry out all to hear the words I will give you. Jeremiah went as God had told him. He bought a clay jar from the potter. He walked with it through the gate of the city and stood by the dump. There Jeremiah smashed the clay pot in front of all the people. <laughs> Jeremiah said to the leaders, this is what the eternal God, the commander of the heavenly army says to say. Take a good look at this shattered jar. It is there any hope of these fragments being pieced together again? Just like this, you will be without hope of repair when I smash this nation and this city. Jeremiah returned to the city. He stood in the court of God's temple and proclaimed the same sermon to all its citizens who had came there to worship. This is what the eternal God, the commander of the heavenly armies, has to say. Watch us bring every disaster I have promised onto Jerusalem and all the towns and villages of Judea, because they are stiff-necked, stubborn people who refuse to listen to what I say. Today's gospel reading comes from the 11th chapter of John, verses 1 through 3 and 32 through 36. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Mar Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus, Barat Lazarus, now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you have been there, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came, who had come from along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where you have laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Here ends the reading. I was 15 years when my family decided to move from that small little village where I grew up and my older brothers grew up into a pretty big city. We had packed everything up. We had one of these big moving trucks, so the furniture, the books, everything was in that truck. The truck took off and all that was left was our smaller family behind in a small, regular car. The people who had helped us load were standing right by our house, and we were ready to take off. I saw them waving, I saw my dad waving, and then I saw my dad starting to cry. I'd never seen my dad cry before. What it did for me is it gave me the permission to cry too. Because the way how I was raised, well, men are tough, boy, you don't cry, you try to hold it all together. My dad just being himself and grieving right there in the process of letting go of 15 years of beautiful, wonderful life and moving, 
yes, to the beautiful new life, but I, as a 15-year-old, I had not imagined anything. For me, this world came crushing down, leaving friends behind, leaving the circumstances, the house, the school, everything was gone there for me. And when we hear the scripture reading of Jesus and his friend Lazarus, and Lazarus was the brother of Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha with whom Jesus had the conversation. Martha was the busy one. She was in the kitchen. She was preparing everything. She was the active one, preparing everything and getting going. And Mary was just sitting down at the feet of Jesus, waiting for inspiration for Jesus to touch her through her message. Martha told Mary, uh, no, Martha actually told Jesus, can you please tell Mary to help me in the kitchen? She was getting worked up in the kitchen. And Jesus says, how about you, Martha? Better join us here. There is something of insight, something you can receive only when you're not caught up in the busyness of your life. So these are the two sisters of Lazarus. Mary the active, Mar uh, Martha the active. Mary the more receptive, meditative, and I think we both have sides in us, and both sides are good to have. Don't want just to be a couch potato. You want to get going sometimes. It's important too. So these sisters had a brother, Lazarus. Lazarus was sick. They asked Jesus, come and help, heal Lazarus. But Jesus came too late. Lazarus had died. And when Jesus came to the grave of Lazarus, they had actually buried him already. He sees these friends of Lazarus, Mary and Martha together too, and they are crying. And it touches Jesus' heart. When Jesus sees them crying, Jesus starts crying too. It gets to him. He experiences this hurt, this loss, this pain, just like the other group gathered there. And the people around who looked at Jesus and who looked at him, maybe they thought, not sure what's going on with him. Their comment was, look how much he loved Lazarus. So his crying, his brokenness, his... Uh, was an expression of his love for Lazarus. We all have experienced some heartache, some pain, some brokenness in our lives. Who has not, and I'm sure you do not raise your hand, not just because you're not shy, or because you're shy. I think you don't raise it because if we're honest with ourselves, we all experience some sadness, some brokenness, some frustration, something that gets us angry and overwhelmed and we do not know what to do with it. There is, in my experience, even a deeper level of pain and brokenness and understanding uh, of the limitations, and that is not when something happens to you or someone else that just happens because Things happen. They just happen. There is a deep pain when you see someone you love and care for hurting and hurting themselves and getting deeper and deeper into it, and you cannot do a thing about it. You cannot do a thing about it. 
I know the story of a woman whose son started with underage drinking, started with a crowd, and then he was in a car and he got his DUIs and she saw her son spiraling down, spiraling down. And it was heartbreak, heartache for her. She didn't know what to do. But throw her hands up and go and find a place counseling someone to help her deal with it. My friends, heartache, heartbreak, they're real, they're human. Jesus experienced that very same thing. What do we do with it? What do we do when we see loved ones go down the wrong way? Well, this is what Jeremiah did. You have just seen it. He hears, yeah, look there. Do you really? I see then, don't do it. It may, may appear somewhere. It may haunt me. Jeremiah gets God's message. He gets the message of God because God cares for the people. God cares for the people. And God sees God's own people, the apple of God's eye. God sees the chosen people of Israel. God sees them getting in trouble, getting off the straight and narrow, going down the wrong way. And God is heartbroken. What am I going to do about this? What can I do with these people? And in another passage, they're called stiff-necked, stubborn, and stupid. They don't get it. So God tells Jeremiah, you know what? Go to a potter, buy a pot. Go out to, outside the door to the dump. Get all the people together and smash it. I'll let it fall again. Some people pay a lot of money to go in one of these smash rooms. You may have seen them. They put on protective gear. They have old computer screens and fridges and all. They lock them up, sledgehammer, and they get all their anger out. That's never how angry I get. But maybe there was some of this pain, some of that frustration in God. So Jeremiah bought the pot, cracked it right there in front of the people. It's coming. This cross here. It's made from broken pieces, from shards, from shatters. It comes from Pastor Penny, who led a retreat with people who looked and focused on where do I experience hurt and pain in my life? Where and how did things fall apart? Where are some things I cannot change in my life? Where I feel like throwing up my hands? And each and every one of them was, a, was to choose shards, pieces of pottery, and she got them from a potter who had leftovers. So all the little pieces, they brought them up front and placed them on the altar. And then Penny's husband, Archie, put them together in plaster and created the cross from it. Broken pieces, our hurts, our pain, 
they can bring us closer to Jesus. The Jesus who says, pick up your cross and follow me. And each and every one of us has some kind of cross to carry and some kind of cross you bear. It's not becoming a perfect bowl anymore. It's not becoming a perfect pot anymore. It's not. But it can become something. It can become something. The other image, you see it on the screen. It's a Japanese art called Kintsumi. And Kintsumi is when a bowl in a Japanese household breaks, some people pick the pieces up, they pick them out, they mend them, and they put them back together with gold. You know that bowl was broken at some point, but it was put together and there is something about the brokenness that shines through where gold, where light, where something beautiful can come out of our brokenness. The Jesus who was crucified and was raised, when his disciples see him, he still has the wound marks. They're not gone away. We have those marks of brokenness in us too. We don't have to hide them. They're just part of who we are. But we know and we trust that a greater one can put us back together, can pick up the pieces, and can fill us with gold, can give us new life. Where and how did you experience brokenness? And what helped you deal with it? And are you willing to bring all the pieces to the living one and hope and, pray, hope and pray that somehow God will find a way to bring healing, to mend, and to bring something good from the brokenness? That's my hope, my peace, my prayer. My hope, my prayer, my wish for each one of you. May it be so.